Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much for taking this time out to listen. Today, I titled this message on discovering you're the other woman, on discovering you're the other woman. For those of you all who have dated or have been married for quite some time, it is unfortunately disheartening to find out that you are not or may have never been the number one pick, okay? This is so true in the scriptures where you will see rulers such as Solomon who had a harem of women. So there was no number one. There were many. And when this sort of thing happens, whether you discover this uh, through some clever ways or you discover this sort of thing because well the man was quite honest and he told you this is what the story is either way when the reality sets in you are not as special as you thought you were the person may have lied they may have exaggerated they of course hid some things and so you are left feeling like you've been cheated, which you have. You have been cheated. You've been cheated out of a quality relationship. You have been cheated out of a future. And some women have said, well, I am not going to let the devil get a foothold. I am going to go all out in this relationship. And if he wants her, then so be it. Or if she wants to... Uh, Keep coming up with ways to get them, then oh well, she can, because that is what it is. And I don't care anymore, okay? Depending on what your mindset is, some women are not going to go away that easily. And others are just tired of the fight. Now, how does God deal with you when the discovery is made? I will tell you from personal experience, he is going to redirect you toward him he's going to do some things and say some things to you using the Holy Ghost to give you the comfort that you need so that you can be able to get up every day and go to work if you have a job or take care of your children he is going to cause you to come up with all sorts of plans that you thought you could never come up with having found out such devastating news and before long, you are going to make the ultimate decision to either li- to either leave or to stick it out. If you stick it out, you may stick it out temporarily and then finally come to a place where you say, OK, I got to go. Because you'll have enough strength, enough finances, enough opportunities and so forth to get away far away, whether you do it mentally, physically, spiritually. The point is, is that you cut that person off who deceived you, who said that they were going to be there for you, who said that they were going to help you and all of that. Strong women do cut their weaknesses off. A lot of times when we get connected with people, we are in a vulnerable state of mind. We are weak to begin with. That's why we didn't see the writing on the wall. Or we may have seen the writing on the wall, but we dismissed it, we ignored it, and we just hoped for the best. God will also move on your spirit to be around other individuals who are like you, um, who are struggling too. Whether they're struggling in their relationship, um, business partnerships, what have you, there is a struggle. Usually he doesn't put self-righteous people around you, but the enemy will. The enemy will put the prideful person around to quite naturally cause you not to want to pray, to be around uh, church folk, um, to read your Bible and everything else, because he knows that there's strength, there's strength that comes from drawing near to the Lord. So if he gets the most boastful, braggadocious, you know, type of individual around you, you're going to be turned off by the faith. Because that person is going to use, unfortunately, the scriptures um, in such a way to hurt you. 
Meanwhile, they think they're elevating you or encouraging you. Um, or maybe they don't believe that. Maybe they just don't like you. And so they come up with all sorts of things. Well, you knew he was married or you knew she was involved in a relationship and you know what the Bible says. And that's why you went through what you went through, you know, and then they're not helping you in the least bit. Or you remember what you did back in the day and what goes around comes around. Uh Uh-huh. You see. So to make the discovery that you are second best or at the bottom of the rung or whatever it is that you see yourself as having been with this individual, God will also work on your self-esteem because it is a crushing blow to your self-esteem. Especially when you went around telling everybody that you had a great relationship and that this individual was into you. When the reality was, was that he was never into any woman or any man, you know, if your situation happens to involve a female. It was always about self. A lot of the most beautiful looking individuals who are constantly taking photographs of themselves, the Lord showed me, are very self-absorbed people. They're narcissists. They love themselves immensely. And they want others to adore them, to worship them. They consider themselves to be their own God. Players are like this. Pimps are like this. Hustlers are like this. Bipolar folks can be like this on a high day, a a manic day. (laughs) Okay? And then come crashing down and want everybody to pity them. Uh, Individuals who have psychopath, sociopathic type of uh, character traits tend to be that way as well. I'm better than everyone else. I know more than everyone else. And when you make me angry, I'm going to go find someone else. Okay? And then you got those who are abusive physically. And they will break you down while they cheat and break somebody else down. And while they cheat some more. And you started off, some of you all, not all. But you know some people who started off in these relationships and they were so much in love. But God is not going to keep us in a blind state of mind, no matter what area of life we are currently in. He's not going to do that. The enemy will. The enemy will use people, places, and things around you to keep you in the dark. That's his job. Particularly when you are not following God. That's what he does. He doesn't want you to know the truth. And you'll even say this. I, don't tell me. I don't want to know. You'll tell God. You'll tell your friends and anybody else. Because you're not ready for it. But a lot of times you are ready for it. Because you prayed and you wanted to know. It's just that. <sighs> you don't want to go through the pain. You're not ready for the pain. You want to know the truth. You're just not ready for the pain. You're not ready for the adjustment. You're not ready, you know, to start your life all over again. I say take one day at a time. I've done it in the past. You take one day at a time. You take every issue and break it down into small chunks. Today, I'm going to cry and get this off my chest. Tomorrow, I'm going to start looking at what opportunities are out there for me to get up out of this situation. The next day, I'm going to talk with a friend and, you know, see how she came out of her mess. Then the next day, I'm going to, and you just break it down, you see. And all the while, you're praying, Lord, what should I do today? If you don't know what to do, Lord, what should I do today? You might have to just sit down and talk with the individual. But then you may have done that a million times over. And now all you're doing is saying, hey, this person's going to lie to me again. It's not worth it. So why put yourself through it? And why set yourself up to be the one who abuses the individual? Because some people, they just can't take another lie and they end up hitting folks. Okay, they start throwing things. So why put yourself in that particular situation? Or if you know someone like this, don't advise them to keep talking about something when you know that there's a long track record of all sorts of uh, um, negative things in that relationship. Talking, talking, talking. After a while, talking does nothing but cause a war. A war that uh, ends up putting some folks in jail or some people six feet deep. Don't encourage wars when you know it's a volatile situation if you're advising someone who's in a mess like this. 
and don't advise yourself if you know that you are capable of getting uh, yourself riled up to a point where you end up hurting someone badly. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And don't and don't take advice from people who, yeah, I knocked this one upside their head because he did this and that to me. Don't don't take advice from those individuals because are they going to bail you out if you end up being in jail? Are they going to accompany you to the court? Most likely not. If anything, they're going to sit back amongst their family members and friends and talk about you. Talk about how you lose control, how you're a nut job, how I, I knew she was a crazy one or he was a, you know, fool. Mm -hmm. Got that woman making him go crazy. You see, it's not worth it. So if this discovery has been made, you take it to the Lord. You ask the Lord to give you the strength. You try to keep everything under wraps until you are prepared to talk about it. Um, I don't suggest that you put that sort of information out there on Facebook and other places, even though it may be very tempting. I also don't suggest that you talk to the busybody of his family or her family, because all they're going to do is spread the information all around. And then folks are going to sit back and if they don't like you, they're going to say, mm hmm. That's what you get. You should have never been doing this, that, and the other. Very judgmental, critical types of people. The other thing I don't suggest is that you uh, try to pay the person back by spending up all their money or, you know, stealing from them, taking. It's not worth it. It really isn't. And then if you did have favor with the Lord and blessings coming to you, you're going to block those. You will block those when you do e evil. So I hope that this has given you uh, some direction, some peace of mind, and know that God sees all and that he will give you the strength to endure. And uh, when the time is right, you will take every necessary step to get free if that's what you want. If you don't want that, then you're going to sit in your mess and you may not get the healing that you truly want. I know some individuals who chose to sit in their mess. And the person continued to cheat and continued to lie on them and everything um, ugly. And then uh, they spent their lives going around telling everybody that they could tell about their cheating no good partner. And God doesn't want us doing that either. So you have to be 100% sold out on the relationship and that you're doing everything to get some healing. But that individual may not stay faithful. They may just give you another pack of lies and the relationship may draw out for another five, six, 10, 15 years or until the day you die. And I'm telling you, that's no way to live and you will hinder your service when you continue to be in a mess. You will hinder your service. So ask the Lord to free you mentally, physically and spiritually. And if it is for you to get a divorce, then so be it. If it is not, then you serve your time. I know from personal experience. <laughs> okay, and you learn a lot. And you go through much. And then when the time is right, God will release you. I thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. And as always, to God be the glory.